Welcome you back to the Patrick Netherton Show here on 1130 The Tiger. He's Rogers. I'm Patrick. And we're pleased to welcome in the radio voice for Westwood One. And now uh, a guy who's branching out and letting us see his handsome face more often on television now for Fox Sports. He is Kevin Kugler. He had the call of Saints and Panthers. Cooks, how are you, man? I, I am good. I apologize for being a little delayed in my arrival. I hope you were able to fill the five minutes without my dulcet tones. No, we actually just played cricket noises the entire time while we were waiting. Oh, that's so, good. Yeah. That's good. So actually, I, it, I, I shudder to think of how the ratings will look in that time when it's an all-time high. Yeah. We'll just be replacing with the cricket show, which I, can, I hear is sweeping the nation. I can, I can, uh, I can promise you. Uh, two hours of cricket noises would rate higher than the Patrick Netherton show does on a daily basis. I can assure you. Hey, uh, I got some bad news for you though, Coogs. The all right, what you got? Um, <laughs> so we're in one of the weirdest markets in in all of the NFL. We are three hours from Dallas, and we are about five hours from New Orleans. And our our market is. A lot of Northwest Louisiana, but a, a little bit more of East Texas slash Oklahoma. So when there's a conflict, the local Fox affiliate has to choose between Saints and Cowboys. Oh boy, they yeah. didn't choose us. Did yeah, they? and guess who didn't get to get to be on the air in Shreveport this week? Man, oh man. and and after I had promised people in Shreveport yes. that they were going to get to see the game, and then nothing. Yeah. Uh, actually, I lucked out. I didn't even realize it before the game. I went to a local local restaurant to eat, and they have Sunday ticket. They had the Saints game on. They had your audio pipe popped in. So I'm like, oh, great. I'll get, I'm going to watch the first half. I'll go home. I'll watch the second half at the house. Realized that, that you know, the tweets were coming in, the Facebook messages. Oh, why is KMSS choosing uh, – why'd they choose the Cowboys and Washington versus the Saints-Panthers so I went ahead and uh, basically just said, you know what, I'm going to stay here through the first half. And then, unfortunately, I didn't get to hear any of you in the second half. So my apologies. And the second half was the half I really decided to shine in that game. Yeah. So you, really, you missed a lot. Yeah. Well, I thought you seemed <laughs> subpar in the first half. So I'm I did. You... I, you know, well, I knew I wasn't on in Shreveport. Right, so I'm like, right. why bother yeah, at this exactly. point? I mean, what's the, what's the point of this thing? If I'm not on in Shreveport, I'm not going to give it. I'm just going to kind of no. halfway this whole game. Mail it in. Mail it yeah. in if you're not getting the Shreveport market. No doubt about exactly. it. That's how you do it. Hey, look, this was this was an intriguing game all the way around. I I trust me, I put uh, KMSS on the uh I, I basically you know, firebombed their station verbally. <laughs> Uh, I was going to say, doing for, that in a real world situation yeah. is probably not a good no, idea. No, no, Let's no. just tell that all the kids out there. Yeah, I verbally yeah. Uh, 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 verbally let them have it about the decision because it, it the, the Saints-Panthers was one of the best matchups of the weekend. Uh, a couple of, of division rivals that were near the top of the NFC South trying to keep pace with Tampa Bay. Going in, did, did you have a feel for this was going to be a close game this was going to be, you know, maybe one of these teams would have an advantage. Or did you feel like this was going to be a tight one throughout? I really felt it would be tight. We had had Carolina a few weeks earlier against Arizona, and I was really impressed with what I had seen in their win over the Cardinals. Mm -hmm. You know, Teddy Bridgewater, everybody down there knows what Teddy's all about. I mean, sure. he's, he's one of the best guys in the game. He's healthy. He's playing at a high level. Robbie Anderson looks like a, an, an all-pro wide receiver this year. Their defense has been sound. I, I like what this Panthers team's all about. And for the Saints, I mean, look, it's a divisional game. And the Saints were down, obviously, Michael Thomas, down Emmanuel Sanders, no Benny Fowler. So you wondered what they were going to have at wide receiver. But you felt pretty confident because Drew Brees seems to make any wide receiver look better when he's throwing the football to him. So we really were excited when we got the matchup. I was more excited about it when I got to New Orleans over the weekend. It was, it was one we were really looking forward to. And it lived up to the billing, which is not always what you can say. But anytime you are a... 65 yard NFL record field goal away from getting, you know, getting a little extra football. Mm -hmm. It's not a bad thing. No, it's not. You've, I know you've been in that building for various events throughout your career. Tell me about the surreality of, of 3000 fans in attendance in that 70,000 seat edifice. Yeah, it's, it's very odd. And that's probably the kindest way to put it. Look, I, I, I miss the fans. I, I wish, I wish we had them in the buildings. It makes for a much better atmosphere much more fun atmosphere I, I miss having them in the building and when we go to places like we are this weekend in Cleveland that has 12,500 it feels like you know almost old times because you have so many people there but it was it was odd and and I'm glad for Saints fans that some of them were able to get in I'm glad more 
assuming that things progress the way they have in Louisiana, we'll be able to get in as the as the weeks and months go on. Because the, the same, I know the players miss having the fans in there. I think if nothing else, this has shown players how much they enjoy playing in front of an audience. Because having talked with a bunch of them over the course of the first seven weeks of the season, to a man, they miss the fans. Mm-hmm. I don't know that they would have gone out of their way to really say that behind closed doors beforehand. You know, there's sometimes a a little bit of a, an abrasive relationship, it would seem, between player and fans in all sports. But I, I think what this has taught these players is how important and how fun it is to have people in the building whooping it up for them. And and I can't wait to get it back, but it because it's 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 odd. It's very very odd to be playing in empty or almost near empty stadiums. Talking to Kevin Kugler of Fox Sports and Westwood One. Uh, all right, so you got to see first couple of weeks of the season, Drew Brees did not look like Drew Brees. The completion percentage was low, even on short passes. He was not pushing the ball down the field at all. He's still not really pushing the ball down the field that much, but that intermediate passing game is back. He's sharp. He's leading the NFL in completion percentage again. What's it like watching a guy like that? You've seen a lot of football in your time. What's it like watching a master of his craft who maybe doesn't have the fastball anymore that he used to, but still mentally as sharp as he ever was and can still put it wherever he wants to inside of about 30 yards. Yeah. And and you use fastball. And and I think that's a relevant comparison because I compare breeze and Brady and some of these guys to pitchers who have at one point in their career, been a 97 mile an hour fastball guy. And they'd lean on that stuff. And as the stuff diminishes over the years, they figure out a way to win in other ways. And the ones, the best ones, the ones who can stick around the longest are the ones who figure out to win with different stuff. And I, I think that's what we've seen from Drew Brees, what we've seen from Tom Brady. And, and here's the thing that I I get, I, you know me well enough, Patrick, to know I get fired up for everything I do. Mm-hmm. I, the, the, the fact that I get to be in a booth calling a game is a gift every single week. And the fact that I get to do it and watch and call games involving players that 40, 50, 70 years from now, we'll still be talking about as some of the greats to ever play the game. That's special, man. That's cool to be able to be in that booth and call games involving these players. And and we all as sports fans are living in a great time for quarterback play right now. Those of us that love football and love the NFL, because not only are we in a time where we get to see some super young quarterbacks on their way up like Patrick Mahomes, but we get to still see legends playing at a high level in their prime still different kind of prime different than what they were 10 years ago, but still extremely effective. And look, Drew Brees is special. He is, he is special. He's been around for 20 years in this league and he looks like he could go for three or four more. Mm -hmm. I mean, he just, he shows no signs of quit and and getting the chance to be there and watch him and call his games. That's man. That's a, that's a gift. And you get to add to your stadium picture collection. Uh, which is which is also a gift to the people who follow me on Twitter, yeah. and they get to see my pictures from booths of stadiums all across the country. It's it's why people have called me, quote, the most valuable follow on Twitter. Mm. And actually, no one's ever said that. Mm. Yeah. Well, that you mm-hmm. can't quote yeah. someone who's never said that. Like, you well, can't, but I you also can't, can't not quote them either. I mean, That's you can true. say quote, but until it's actually proven that no one said it, perhaps someone did say so it. So what you're saying is you're fake news, Kugler. I, well, I'm on Twitter and I'm a media guy. What uh, else is that? That's true. That's true. You're absolutely <laughs> fake news. Um, I will say this. You know, I, you're one of the guys that I was happiest to see able to get a, you know, a deal in the booth because you'd kind of, you, you know, you'd been in, the, in, in doing some drop-ins here and there, fill-ins for some other guys here and there. What's it been like knowing you've got that every every week, week in and week out assignment in the NFL? Um, it, it's it uh, obviously it's great. I right. mean, I it's been a it's been a ton of fun. It's one of those things though where I still every week I'm sort of like, am I really still doing this? It, it's something I keep waiting for somebody to come tap me on the shoulder and go, well, that was fun and we really enjoyed seeing you here. Now we're going to have to ask you to leave because you're in this man's chair. So I, I but I'm I'm I, I love it. I mean, it is it's the it's what you hope to do someday when you get into this business. Like, can I call these games at the, at the highest level? And I work with a great team, which helps. Chris Spielman is as smart a football guy as I've ever been around. 
Laura Oakman is one of my favorite people. I've worked with Laura for a lot of years on Westwood One, so I knew Laura very well coming into this. We've got a great production crew, and it's different this year. Our, a lot of our crew is not on site. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we COVID test every week, all of these things that we do to make sure that we're not you know, dragging it around the country with us, and, and that's fine. I, I'm more than happy to do whatever we need to do, A, to keep the rest of our crew safe, and B, to be able to broadcast these games because I do think that during this time, and we've done it, and our crew especially, and really everybody at, at Fox has made a point of saying, you know, we're going to cover stories that come up, but the reason you're tuning into a game on a Sunday is for a football game. You're, you want to watch football. You want three hours to think about nothing, if you don't want to, other mm-hmm. than football. And that's what we're providing, and I, and I love that because that's what I want to do. I want to call and broadcast football games, and if we can serve – as even a little bit of a distraction during a really stressful and hard time for people, even better. I love it. Let's bring it on and bring on the football. You know, coming up in uh, November 25th is the start of college basketball season. A lot of that is still in flux. You've got uh, conferences going to these these sort of uh, multi-team sites now where you play a couple of different games at the same site over the course of, of a day or two. When you look at the college basketball landscape, because we're all, we're getting there, we're about a month away now, what what are your concerns and what are maybe your hopes in terms of being able to get a college basketball season in? Because as we know, that was the thing that was taken away from us at the very beginning of this pandemic. Right, and, and I think you would agree with me when I say you absolutely, for the long-term viability of the sport, you can't miss a second NCAA tournament. Agreed. I mean, it, it has to be played – some way, somehow, or college basketball does not exist in this same form or fashion in years to come. So that, that's the first thing you have to, any of this college basketball conversation has to be had with the backdrop of there, there is 100% necessity to have an NCAA tournament if you are a fan of college basketball and want it to continue. That said, the expectations for college basketball, I, I think you've got to do whatever you can to get as many games in your conference played as possible. Any out of conference games, I think are going to be a bonus this year. I hope we have some because there's some tasty little games that are popping up on these schedules that are starting to crop up here and there, whether an Iowa Gonzaga matchup being played on a court in South Dakota Mm -hmm. and Kansas Creighton being played in early December down at Allen Fieldhouse before a limited number of fans. I, I, I hope we get some of those games, but there's going to be obviously concerns about transmitting a virus indoors in winter it's been a concern since this pandemic started what happens in the winter and that's going to be the big question is can we in the winter time pull this off and then i assume we will bubble an ncaa tournament uh you would think so uh you would you kind of have to i think in in order to make it work hey uh last thing you mentioned uh, the covid protocols uh, what are y'all going through? What do, what do you have to do week in and week out to make sure that you're okay to go call a, a game on Fox? Well, we, are, we, we have specific protocols that we go under. Like I mentioned, we COVID test every single week mm-hmm. to make sure that, we are not, uh, you know, that we're not running around with this or bringing it into our compound um, for, for broadcast purposes. All of our crew has to test. We have testing on site. So our producer, our director, my spotter, staff guy, everybody has to test. Mm-hmm prior to entering the facility so once everybody's cleared everybody's good to go we you know i've had my temperature taken more times in the last three months than i have in the entirety of my life Uh, we check our temperature days before we leave just to kind of get a baseline as to what we are before we hit the road um if by some chance something would happen while we're on the road we quarantine on site we don't quarantine you know, we don't get back on a plane and fly home. So there's, you know, all of the protocols that a lot of people are going through, if they're back at their workplace right now, temperature checks are going to be a thing right now. Obviously masks are, are, are a thing for all of us these days. And it's just one of those things that, you know, you, is it, is it something you love doing? Of course not. Nobody loves to have a COVID test, but it's something you do because you want to be a part of this. You want to be a part of this broadcast. You want to be a part, you know, you want to work. And so it's, you're trying to keep everybody around you safe and you want to have that knowledge of, okay, everybody here is clean. We're good. Let's have a broadcast. And our crew mantra all year, Patrick, has just been get to Sunday. So whatever it takes to get to Sunday, mm-hmm. we're going to get to Sunday. Hopefully the teams will get to Sunday as well. We don't have any access to players or coaches. So 
there's no face to face meetings, even with negative COVID testing. We do everything over, you know, video conferencing right. like everybody else these days. But yeah. yeah, we just we go through the normal protocols to make sure everything's good, and then we we get to Sunday and and hopefully have a football game to broadcast. And and kudos to the NFL because they're. They're, they're plowing forward, and we're back on track now as we move into week eight. Well, I hope they're doing temperature checks with the forehead uh, gun, not necessarily as they used to when you were a kid, because that would be yeah, uncomfortable. I, th- yes, that that would be uncomfortable, and I believe time-consuming. Yeah, um, probably. And not to mention uh, perhaps some sort of cleanliness standard would mm, be violated there. Yeah. So, yeah, mo- most of the time it's just forehead. Well, I have that's... not run into anything – other than that, thank goodness. Okay, well let's let's hope that continues for you, sir. Yeah, so hey, we all we all hope that. Yeah, no, no, everyone does. Hey, uh, you're the best, Cougs. I really do appreciate it, man. Uh, again, the first half was terrific. Uh, I know you were even better in the second half, but you know none of us got to see any of that around here. But uh, man, I do enjoy your call, and I'm very very happy for you that you're getting to do NFL every week. And obviously, we look forward to you back on Westwood One here when basketball season gets going. I'm I'm excited to get back on, Patrick. It's great to be back on with you as well. Thanks so much for having me on. All right. Kevin Kugler, Fox Sports, Westwood One.